Welcome back to this week's episode of High Fantasy. Uh, today we're covering The Boys, episode five, which came out two days ago, but we watched today. And then we're going to talk about some video games. I, I, I was really fucking stoned when I watched this. I couldn't not be, dude. I got dosed. Well, so did they. No, they took that V-juice again. Oh, did that they? Temp v. Who? Yeah. Who was this? It was fucking Huey and Butcher, dude. How did this episode even fucking start out? I know I loved it. I know that. But I know I don't remember a single fucking thing about it for some reason all of the sudden. Okay, so Billy Butcher, he was banging Queen Maeve, and that was awesome. But then <laughs> later on, Homelander smelled it, and then Homelander cornered Queen Maeve, had Black Noir ambush her, and then that's the last we saw of Queen Maeve. So she's probably okay. I doubt she's dead because we haven't seen like a body yet or like the murder mm-hmm. in progress. Uh, so I th- I think Queen Maeve's gonna make a comeback somehow. Uh, but the other main thing we that stood out is the boys start trying to track down Soldier Boy. It's really fucking hard not to call him Captain America. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, and they they track down Soldier Boy, which is Jensen Ackles, aka uh, better looking Captain America, yep. even to be honest. And Cooler voice. Yeah, better voice. Mm. Better, like, just everything is pretty fucking cool about this guy, except maybe, like, the, like, sexism. He might be sexist. Who knows? Uh, so, uh, they they try to track him down because, like, they, they find his costume maker, or right? Or is that is that what that guy does? Uh, the legend. Yeah, the yeah, legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fucking legend. Read a book. Yeah, he says to Huey, because Huey's like, who's this guy? Yep. And he's like... He's a, he's a legend, and he's like, that's a cool name. He's yeah. like, it's not a fucking name, it's a level. <laughs> <laughs> it's a level. Um, and so they find out where Soldier Boy's headed. Soldier Boy's headed to his ex-girlfriend's house, maybe still girlfriend in his head, because he's been frozen for like 40 years, and he's in full outfit, basically walking there yep. to go confront his ex-girlfriend, and the boys don't know why. They just know it wasn't a great relationship. And they get there. Uh, she's... <laughs> what was her name exactly? Uh, Crimson something. Crimson something. Crimson chimpanzee. She's doing I like... Know. She did some work with monkeys yeah. at the zoo. She was... Uh, and she was doing porn. Yeah, so the boys walk in on her doing uh, some cam girl stuff. Yeah. With the with cameo Seth Rogen, Seth Rogen yeah. yeah. That was good. That was a great cameo. That was. That was he was good. just jerking off the whole yeah. time. I've, I've been waiting for him to come into the show because at the end credits of every scene you see him, executive producer, Seth Rogen, I was like, I know he's going to make a cameo. Oh, yeah, or at so. least a voice of some yeah. sort. Yeah, exactly. It's always, like, you can always tell it's Seth Rogen's voice yeah. whenever you hear him some, <laughs> like in something. You're like, I don't even need to see the credits to know like that laugh. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so we see Seth Rogen shirtless beaten off to... Uh, this superhero chick, a.k.a. Soldier Boy's ex-girlfriend. And the boys show up, ambush her, tie her up, uh, which is like doesn't really change the whole mood that much of the scene. And they start asking her about like Soldier Boy. And she's like, no, 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 no. We're all going to die if you guys don't like untie me and leave if Soldier Boy's coming to get me. And then sure enough... Yeah, Soldier Boy comes in. He's like... She goes, oh, wow, you look so young. And he goes, you look so old. And then just, like, kills her. He blasts yep. the shit out of her. His, he's got that chest blast thingy that uh, nullifies powers, but also just fucking roasts people at the same time. Yeah, that was gnarly. Yeah, so he just roasts the whole trailer. So I'm thinking, because his first initial blast was still pretty powerful, right? Yep. Blasted yep. through a couple walls, fucked up uh, Kamiko. <laughs> And well, then, also, previously in the episode, there was another blast. He basically took out, like, the entire side of a building. True. So. So what I'm thinking is the suit amplifies it. Mm. Now, that's a theory, right? Theory. I don't know. But it seems that, like, that trailer park blast was particularly massive. Yeah. Well, they were talking about in the show that, like, they think that all the torture is what made him stronger, too. Maybe. So they think the actual, because, I mean, they showed the clips of him, like, shoving guns down his fucking throat and just blasting away mm-hmm. just to test how strong he was. Mm-hmm. And they're like, all right, let's do his, his uh, retinas next. And then. That's when he, like, broke yeah. free, fucked him up. Yep. Yeah. So Soldier Boy confronts the boys first. 
uh, talks to Billy. Billy, like, comes under the information that uh, Soldier Boy just doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. No, what I was trying to say is um, when Soldier Boy confronts his girlfriend slash ex-girlfriend, she reveals that uh, she was pretty much the one that got him captured. Yeah, she was just like, it wasn't my idea. How much did they pay you? And then he's like, I, they didn't. And that really pissed him off. And yeah. then she said, we all hated you. Yeah, yeah. that's that's really what made so, him do And we blast. don't really quite know why. We don't know what Soldier Boy did yet to make everybody hate him. Obviously, we know he's killed a lot of people. Yeah. But and, Well, I mean, with powers like his, there has to be a lot of collateral. Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's no way there isn't, so it only makes sense that, yeah, a bunch of fucking people hate him. And then and there's Mother's Milk, who... But knowing nothing about Soldier Boy in that scene, the way he, like, expressed his reaction, like, you could see he was genuinely hurt by that. Yeah, 100%. And then he blasted her. He's like, all right, I hate you, too. Butcher had to roofie Mother's Milk. He did. He roofied Mother's Milk, because ro- Mo- Mother's Milk, didn't he take some of the vault juice? No, he didn't. He, he didn't? was the only one who was like, nope, not going to do it. Okay. My dad told me to draw caved. a line. And then it's basically, they were because they were arguing, he's like, we got to draw a line. And Butcher's like, there is no line. He's like, and he's like, there has to be a line. There's one thing different about me and you, mate. I can't draw no line. Something like <laughs> yeah, that. That was pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see how that translates. Anyway, to- so that, that kind of is like the most important things. But I want to talk about the Kamiko thing. The Kamiko thing? Because I love that dynamic between Kamiko and Frenchie. Yeah, they're I like, just I really like that bit of like side story that's going on there. A part of me hopes that like they just kind of quit the boys and just yeah. like happily I ever really after. I really want them to have a happy ending. Out of everybody in the show right now, Kamiko and Frenchie are the two most like pure-hearted. They're not going to get it. Probably not. The Be- show's fucked. And the reason they're not going to get it is because it's written to where we want that. Mm-hmm. And so they're going yeah. one of them's going to die and I Probably. Hope- I mean Frenchie just kind of at the end of that oh. little section got he got kidnapped. Yeah. He did. Yep. By, right uh, after the, the Russians? Right at, uh, yeah, by the Russians after, I can't remember her name, but basically she told him you have to do this for me. What you've been doing isn't good enough. You have to go kill this dad and her da- and his daughter or whatever. He's mm-hmm. like, no, it's just a kid. And she's saying, it's like, you always say you can't kill and that it kills you to kill, but you kill all the time, so fuck you. But yeah, he's just trying to be with Kamiko, and it's just not happening for him. Mm-hmm. Kamiko's getting so much better, too. She lost her powers. And she's so happy about losing her powers. She is. And then, you know, she tries to speak. She gets a little bit of something out. And then, you know, it goes in the whole musical number for, like, imagining mm-hmm. more stuff. And then she ends up kissing Frenchie. And Frenchie asks, leaves the room and yeah. is, like, pretty happy about it, getting him coffee. And that's when he gets kidnapped. And now Kamiko thinks that she just scared him off or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's that little thing going on there. But I will say, I'm really, I'm really wondering what it is that is... Uh, Soldier Boy's biggest character flaw. What is his hubris? Yeah. Right? Because, like, there's part of me that thinks no way he's as bad as Homelander, but he might have just been the Homelander of that time. That's true. Yeah. Who was just, a like, a horrible person. But, like, in the shots, once again, in the shots that we have of Soldier Boy, he's a douchebag at best. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's... But shit, for all we know, not that he could bad. take out Homelander. And then just replace him. But, like, what do you want? Do you want an evil psychopath, like, supervillain? Or do you want, like, a douchebag with badass superpowers? Like, I'm going to go with the douchebag because he does, in the end of the day, like, mean well and he feels bad about things. And, like, like he has feelings. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, Homelander is so off the off the wall with yeah. like his emotions and how he feels that he's not even really a human anymore. And so I had an interesting theory. You, yeah. You've seen, have you seen uh, Avatar Last Airbender? Uh, the movie? No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So at the end of uh, the last season, season book three, um, Aang learns that he can take away people's bending, right? So he learns Shit. that he, with, if somebody who's really bad, he has the capability to basically remove somebody's power to make them not be able to bend anymore. Yeah. I'm thinking that maybe Soldier Boy will be able to learn to control his power and do something similar. And they'll use Soldier Boy to start taking away these villains' powers. If you have a different theory of like what's going on with the boys, let us know down in the comments below. 
Uh, don't don't be afraid to leave a comment, like, share, subscribe. And then we're going to get into some video game stuff, too. I kind of want to cover a couple uh, video game topics. What you got on there? One in particular. So something I haven't seen in a while is like a uh, like a fantastical Western game. Mm. Like a, like, And I'm not talking about like Red Dead Redemption, which is like, I wouldn't call it realistic, but it's definitely more realistic based western so, fantasy right yeah. i'm talking about a western fantasy hell yeah uh and there was a trailer that just dropped a few days ago for a game called evil west and it's a gameplay trailer and it's a vampire hunting game the old west i have not seen it so um i wish we could throw it up but uh if you haven't seen it just go ahead and YouTube the Evil West trailer. It's a Western action adventure shooter. Uh, also, like other weapons in there too. Like you have a kind of a array of weapons that you kind of carry on yourself. And it looks like you work with another vampire hunter. And there's some gameplay. You have a dope ass outfit, which I'm sure you'll be able to customize. And it's called Evil West. So this game's pretty dope. Uh, you can fucking use a rope to swing. Do he just Indiana Jones with that gap? Yeah. Yeah, that you're like a dope. mix between Indiana Jones, my D and D character, and that's and, it. And a vampire. Yeah, 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 dude. It's like a Van Helsing western. That's it's, that's pretty dope. It's kind of cool. Looks good. It does look good. Uh, so that's something I'm excited for. They put out like a 20 minute gameplay trailer. Go watch that. And they also put out a 20 minute gameplay trailer on a game called Starfield oh, by boy. Bethesda and Starfield is a space age action adventure where you get to you get to explore not only just other planets that are like full planets but uh solar systems mm -hmm. how many solar systems uh i forget how many solar systems but there like are 100? a thousand planets yeah i want to say it's a hundred yeah probably something like that solar systems a thousand planets Wild. Uh, there's going to be a story arc that takes you all the way through space mm -hmm. you get to build your own ship Yep. Oh, they were so I was looking at some more stuff about it. apparently the um so like Skyrim and Fallout it takes about like I don't know between like 20 and 25 hours to complete the main quest, right? Mm -hmm. This game's supposedly going to be more closer to like 30 to 40 to complete the main quest. Yeah. Which is one of the longest main quests we've seen in a game in a while. Mhm. Mm so I hope it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hope it'll be fun. I mean and then if it's not you have a thousand other planets to go explore and find side quests on. Mm -hmm. So exactly, yeah. So that's 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 a good one. Uh, looks like it's going to be a uh, character creation kind of thing. You can make your character look like whatever. Um, it's, it looks similar. Like it looks like you would if you advanced Fallout mm -hmm. way more in like actual gameplay experience and put it in space. Yeah. So I think the thing that I'm most excited for this game is normally when a new, <coughs> new when, when a new game drops in about like maybe the first two weeks, people know everything there is to know about the game and the map and everything like that. Yeah. For this game, I know that's not going to be the case. A thousand planets, a thousand maps is way too many. This is going to be a game where people are finding new stuff for probably a couple of years. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, like, look at yeah. Breath of the Wild. People are still finding new techniques and new things in that game, and the map isn't like, I mean, it's pretty big, but it's not that big. It's not that big, actually. And people are still finding new stuff. So, like, this game, I'm excited. There's not going to be, even if somebody spoils something for you, you're going to find something that you've never seen online before, yeah. which is going to be something new. Which, and, and the kind of like the way it was being chalked up to me by, like, other fans of, of this kind of game is uh, a lot of the planets are going to be like, yeah, you can explore the whole planet, but it's mm -hmm. mostly for, like, resources and stuff. Yeah. And, and I would expect that, you know? I wouldn't expect a thousand fully detailed planets. Yeah, like, you're like not going to have can't. a full city on every single planet. No, you just can't. I mean, you're going to have some that are just, like, rocks in space. Yeah, it's some, like, desolate wasteland shit. Yeah. Like, basically, it's like, I'm on Mars. What's there to do? Not much. Not a fucking whole lot, dude. Um, so, yeah. I, but you can build a base anywhere you want. And you can build your ship to look like anything you want. Yep. And So if you find a desolate wasteland planet, you can build it. You can build up. You can build your own little place on it if you want to. Yeah. I mean, you're the only person there, but, yep. you know. That could be your home base. It's like, this planet's mine now. Yeah. 
So that's pretty cool. Oh, and another like good bit of news from Bethesda before we move on is they said Elder Scrolls, the next one, will come out before the next Fallout. So we got that going for us, luckily, because we've been waiting for Skyrim since Skyrim, which was <laughs> 2011. So it's been officially 11 years, and we've just been playing ESO, all right? Elder Scrolls Online. Um, but one more game I kind of want to talk about like a little bit uh, is Marvel's Midnight Suns. Midnight Suns uh, kind of looks like a like an action adventure of sorts. Uh, you get to create your own character. They kind of go into that a little bit. Uh, your character is like basically the chosen one. You team up with a bunch of superheroes, the Midnight Suns, which is just various Marvel heroes. And... Uh, yeah, so basically, in this game, you create your own character. You team up with others. They get really cool outfits. And the most important part is going to be combat and how it's based. It's based with, like, uh, playing cards, the combat is. So what, did the, what the fuck did... What does that even mean, right? Uh, Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, yes. Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Exactly. So it's going to be, instead of, like, you hit X to, like, slash, it, it'll, when it is your turn, it's turn-based. A bunch of different cards pop up. You get to use the one you want to use. Mm. And then next. I might, might be into that. I'm, I'm a big fan of turn-based style games just because I really enjoy the strategy that goes into it. I'm not going to lie. There's not a much, as much strategy in hack and slash games. There, there can be, yeah, but it's, it's, be. it's way easier to just get stoned and button mash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there definitely can be a lot, but like compared to a turn-based style game where you have certain abilities and certain moves that work at certain points, mm -hmm. it's I just find that a lot more fun. That's why I like Pokemon so much is because yeah. the uh, there's just so much and there's status conditions that affect you. There's all these things that affect you in different ways that make moves stronger and make moves weaker. And it all depends on the exact person you're fighting in that moment. I would say video, video game-wise, the only turn-based game I really liked was uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Okay. Uh, I would say, other than that, the only turn-based game I really like is D&D. Dungeons and Dragons, obviously. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be completely honest... Ah, it's the turn-based thing with this Marvel's Midnight Suns is kind of what makes me not want to play it. I do want to play it. It looks like it has a cool storyline and might be worth, you know, sucking a couple hours out yeah. of my life. Honestly, for me, it just depends on how the card systems work. But let us know what you think on, on combat and uh, what you prefer in a video game down in the comments below. But before we go, I gotta I gotta call out the beer goblin. I think because I think today uh, uh, I don't he's think... actually graduated into a shot goblin. A, sh a shot goblin. Yeah, I think he's shot goblin. That's what I heard. Hard liquor. Oh shit. Okay, something else special for you. What? Well, I found it back in the washroom. Oh, thanks. You might want to give that a shot. Is that a preview for something? Yeah. You... Thanks, beer goblin or shot goblin. I'm gonna want this. It's a chaser. <laughs> I chaser hardly know her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyways, that was this episode of High Fezzy. If you fucking like that shit, like that shit. If you didn't, uh, fucking dislike it. I don't know. Yeah. Share it. Subscribe. Comment down in the comment section. Uh, Fuck it. What else do they got to do, bro? Uh, Tap the bell. Fucking follow us on social media. You can find me at AJ the Mouse. Um, this is Grant's page. I'm only on Instagram. <laughs> and I don't uh, do me, the tweeters. Me too. I'm not a twatter. I don't Facebooks. No. I don't. No, I have one friend on Facebook. So I don't. I got a it. YouTube. It's Rivermouth official. You can go listen to my tunes. Fucking see you next week on High yeah. Fantasy. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. <laughs>